Acoustic Guitar Sessions today, we have Preston Reed. We're very glad to have you in here, Preston. Nice Good to be to here, Mark. You. Preston, uh, of course, had a huge influence, his percussive style of playing on guitarists like Khaki King and Andy McKee. And um, we're going to talk a little bit about how you got started and who you were influenced by the sort of American primitive stuff that John Fahey was doing back in mm -hmm. the day, I'm, I assume was a, a big part of your It was, path. for sure, yeah. Well, talk about that a little bit, how you got started on guitar. Well, I got started on guitar by, by um, uh, discovering, first it was Jorma Kaukinen, actually, um, uh, who, uh, he was in Jefferson Airplane, but he also made this fantastic record with Jack Cassidy, um, it was just called Hot Tuna, mm -hmm. you know, and then, then that became a band that they, you know, but their fir very first record entitled Hot Tuna was all acoustic, or, you know, his playing was all acoustic. And so, you know, I bought that record when I was 15 and just started sort of trying to learn the tunes on it. And then um, I discovered John Fahey mm -hmm. and his record America. And from there, I, I learned the, the alternating bass finger, you know, finger picking style. And then I found Leo Kotke, which is sort of, you know, in terms of technique, is sort of like a turbo version of John Fahey, you right. know, with, um, you know, an amazing, powerful right hand uh, finger picker. So, the skills that I acquired from from those three guitarists got me this really firm foundation in multi-voiced um, finger style playing, mm -hmm. and so and because I've always been a composer and always written music, um, I just I just started you know went as far as I could with that, and then in uh, the late '80s, um, having heard guitarists like uh, Michael Hedges, Eddie Van Halen, um, Jeff Healy, and Stanley Jordan, and seeing all the creative stuff they were doing on the neck of the guitar. You know, so-called tapping. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that intrigued me in terms of you know coming up with with my own my own sort of uh, project on the guitar, which was really to see if I could play drums and guitar at the same time. Mm -hmm. And and I really adapted what I'd learned from alternating bass finger picking, which is that if you've got you've got one voice going on with your thumb, you know. syncopating with your fingers. So that multi-voiced um, feature of alternating bass finger picking, I adapted to, um, to uh, you know, a, a, a sort of multi-voiced percussive way of playing where I was, you know, doing things like, you know, um, um, And, you know, everybody thinks that, that, you know, what I'm doing is so sort of complicated and, and everything. But actually, um, th it, was, it was a logical progression of, uh, you know, from, from what I'd learned from alternating bass finger picking. Is there, do you have to set up the guitar in a different way to do, to, to do those things and, and do the percussive stuff too? No, and any acoustic guitar um, is, is already ideally suited to playing percussively. Now, you know, in terms of amplifying it when you're playing for an audience, it's mm -hmm. good to have, you know, a microphone or something that will pick up the, 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 the percussive sounds you're making. But that's, you know, but if I'm just playing in a room like, like I just was, in, you know, when I formed these tunes, it's not necessary, you know. An acoustic guitar is already, you know, and that's really what attracted me to, to, to exploring all those different sounds that you, you know, that you can make on an acoustic guitar, and and you know that's that's why you know I had the the um, the motivation to invent a new way of playing was so I could include all the many different um, percussive textures and percussive sounds within uh, a, a composition in real time. So you you did come up with a new style of playing, and it was different from Michael Hedges, and it was different from you know from stuff Fahey was doing. It was different from stuff Cocky was doing. What is that, and how did that come about? Okay. Well, um, by the way, I, I call it integrated percussive guitar playing, mm -hmm. and what what's what's unique about it um, is is that there is an actual percussive groove built into the, the tune. You, mm -hmm. know, you just heard me going, you know, rant, you know. So it's not the same as if I were playing the guitar normally and then you know and then did a you know played drums on the top and then went back to playing normally. It's actually the the tunes are built from the ground up with with a with a with an integrated percussive groove. Um, tell me about your very first performance. You performed uh, with Allen Ginsberg, right? Yes. Um, uh, my my oldest sister um, uh, was living in Washington D.C. and she had a, a a friend that she brought up to. We we were living in you know upstate New York and she had a friend she brought up for the weekend. 
um, who did the special events programming for the Smithsonian Institution. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, my parents had a, had a party that weekend, and um, I was asked to play, and I was, you know, at the time I was, you know, starting to get pretty good at, you know, this, you know, finger picking and, and writing my own stuff. So I, I played a few tunes at, at the party, and this woman um, really liked that. And then a couple of weeks later, uh, she called up and asked me if I wanted to come down to Washington and open for Allen Ginsberg. Wow. So. <laughs> Were you so, a fan already? Uh, I, I knew who he was, cause, actually, because I was, I was quite into literature and poetry back then. So, yeah, I did know who he was, but you know, after that I started reading his stuff more. But, um, yeah, I was you know, very excited. So, yeah, I took, took the train down to Washington, D.C., and it was, it, was a, it was a fun gig. It was quite relaxed and quite improvised. You know, he, uh -huh. he sort of sat in, in the lotus position and played this... Um, what was it called a harmonium? Right. It was sort of like a, a tiny little little keyboard that he squeezed, mm -hmm. and I sat next to him, and um, uh, he had me, you know, play basically a, um, just sort of you know some 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 finger picking rhythms, and he actually read poetry over over what I was doing, and also asked me to just play a, a solo piece. Wow! But a lot of it was really just I just think he wanted someone to be hanging out with him while he was doing this this poetry reading. Right. Right. So and, and improvisation, I think that he was a, a yeah. lot about. You know, improvising, whether it was yeah. whether poetry or music, you've met Khaki King, and you yeah. you, you helped her define her style too. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that a little bit. Well, I was uh, teaching at a, at, a, at a guitar workshop in North Carolina called the Swannanoa Gathering, mm -hmm. and I taught there for about five years. Um, and Khaki uh, came, I think, the second year, and she um, just seemed to be quite interested in in, in the way that I play. Um, I mean, a lot of people were, but she seemed to have have a, a, a you know some really a lot of a lot of talent for quickly picking up things, mm -hmm. and um, so she would you know you know audit my my classes and and um and then she asked me to actually teach her one of my tunes, which is called Blasting Cap, mm -hmm. which I did, and she was able to pick it up very quickly, and um and then you know I think she she sort of using all these techniques and things that I that I'd shown him really just using using the approach that I invented um, mm -hmm. she you know con continued from there and you know I think a whole generation of of uh, of, of guitarists really um, have you know gravitated towards that sound right and mo most recently uh, some young man uh, found you through searching through uh, through khaki king right yeah and, and you ended up doing a ted talk together talk about that if you can. yeah there, um there's a, a young guitarist named usman rias and uh about two years ago we we did a, a ted talk in edinburgh at the ted global 2012 and you know it wasn't actually we weren't talking but it was it's called a ted talk right um but yeah he he um had uh you know found khaki king on the internet he was you know he was living in, in pakistan um but he he uh been listening to to her music and really really liked what she was doing, and then he then he found out that Khaki had learned from me um, the, the, this this approach and everything. So he found me on the internet and started studying my music, and so the concept of this TED talk was was you know the way that he has electronically learned how to play the guitar from 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 me, you know, mm -hmm. just through through all, through my YouTube videos and everything. And then they put us together and we actually jammed together, and it and it and it was really. Quite, quite fun. It's a phenomenal performance too. It's, it's an amazing performance. If you get a chance to see it, go, go take a look on YouTube. Preston, you have a couple of guitars here, um, Bailey's here that that you've designed, right? Could yeah. you tell me a little bit about that? Process? Yeah. For about fifteen years, I was playing this this um, um, Ovation long neck mm -hmm. that um, that uh, I really liked, but I basically just wore it out, you know, after thousands of shows. And um, so it was time for a new guitar, but there were things that I really liked about the, you know, the, the, the scale length and, and the neck and the way that, and the, the, way that, it, that the ovation balanced. So I went to Mark Bailey, who lives about 12, 12 miles away from me in, in Scotland, and um, I'd met him when I uh, played at this festival in Scotland in, in 2000. So I took basically a, 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 you know, a, a design to him you know, and said, you know, can, you, can, you make, can you make me an acoustic guitar with these dimensions that has this kind of feel and, that, you know, and has this particular kind of sound? Mm -hmm. And um, he, he did. And, uh, and so that, that's, that's how this one got made. This is a, that's the jumbo. This, right? Yeah. No, actually, this is, this is a long neck or, or baritone. We just call it a baritone. Um, and then this one is the jumbo that he made. It was the second guitar he made for me, which is the, you know, this is a quote-unquote normal guitar. Right. You know? So this one has got a, um, an extra long scale length. Oh. 
And so you, you have a couple of, you have what looks like a pick guard there, and what, what looks to me like a tap guard. Um, is, is that what that is? It's, yeah, this is actually, um, although, you know, it, you, you know some people think it's a, it's a percussion pad or something, it's actually just there to protect the top because sometimes I'll play with a thumb pick and, 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 and strike the, the top to get a percussive sound. And if, if this weren't there, the thumb pick would eventually just, you know, puncture the, 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 the top. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 